I've got to admit, it has taken me decades to learn these principles and how to apply them, but I have learned, and by the way, I am still learning. I'm in my 70s, yeah, I've picked up a thing or two I want to share with you what I've learned, and maybe I can help you along the way. I'm not giving advice, I'm just sharing with you some of the things that I've learned, some of the ideas that I have applied. I've got 13 of these, but hang on, this is going to be a very short video because we're just going to touch on each one of these and then we'll tie them all together at the end so you got to pay close attention at number one how do i make narcissists regret ever having abused me is i demonstrate contentment uh, what what a narcissist loves to do is he or she loves to throw you off center because that demonstrates to them that they are in control so for you to demonstrate to the narcissist that they are not in control is to show that you are perfectly content without them. You're content with them. You're content without them. They just don't matter. They want to matter because they want to control. They want that supply. Number two, and I told you we're going to go through these fairly quickly. Number two is sometimes you just need to use direct confrontation. By that I mean you need to look the narcissist in the eye and say to him or her personally. Ask him a question such as, do you feel guilty? And you know if you've watched past videos, I always like to ask questions. Because people feel obligated, just a natural response. They feel obligated to answer and that means you got inside their head. It's kind of like if you take a ball and throw it at somebody, their natural instinct, their response is to try to catch it or bat it away or whatever. So when we're dealing with a narcissist, we want to do the same thing. We're not throwing a ball, we're throwing a question at them, and their natural response is to uh, think about it. So you want to get inside their head. So you ask them, do you feel guilty about what you're doing? What you're doing is you're saying, I know what you're on to. I'm confronting you with it. You're no longer in control. Do you have empathy? You may want to ask them that question or both. Or you may want to say something to the kin, uh, something like, uh, are you a narcissist? You know, ask the narcissist if he or she is aware that they are narcissists. Again, I'm not giving advice. I'm just saying, hey, I've tried it. That's what I find it works. You take it or leave it, it's totally up to you. Number three is exploit their insecurities. Now, what I have discovered dealing with narcissists over the years is these people are painfully insecure. I suspect that may be one of the root reasons, root causes for their narcissism. They need to cover up, they need to mask those insecurities. And if you exploit their insecurities just by noting them, and again, it may be direct confrontation. You can do that by just asking, you know, why do you feel so insecure? Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to act this way? So they don't like that because it says they're onto them and the narcissist has to be deceptive all the time, every time. When they stop being deceptive, they stop being in control. And when they stop being in control, their ego is no longer satisfied. And they're done. They're just done. Number four is don't validate them. That is to say, don't play with them. Now, there are some basketball teams that are professional basketball teams. And there are some basketball teams that are middle school basketball teams or as we used to say, junior high basketball teams. And you notice that the uh, professional basketball teams play each other. But I've never known a professional basketball team to play a junior high team. Now, maybe they have some time just as, I don't know, as a fundraiser, whatever. I don't know that they do. Why? Because, well, they're out of their league. I mean, literally out of their league. You are out of the Narcissist League. You're in the NBA. They're the junior hires, maybe elementary school league. So why are you playing with them? Now, if the professional basketball team, the NBA team, played the junior high team, then they are validating that junior high team by saying, you are as good as we are, or we think you are. Otherwise, we wouldn't be playing with you, right? So that's what you do when you are interacting with a narcissist. You're going down to this elementary school league when you are a pro, 
and you're playing with them. You are validating them. Number five, this is kind of simple, and that is, uh, I say this almost every video, and that is ignore them when you can. You can't always do that. You know, you work with them. Uh, if you're so unfortunate, you may be married to one. I hope not. Uh, Fortunately, I'm not, but you may have a narcissist in your family. You can't go away, get away from them. They may be in your class at school, almost guaranteed somebody at your school is a narcissist. You know, they say that maybe as many as six out of a hundred people are clinical narcissists. I mean, full-blown narcissists, not just having narcissistic traits. So chances are, if you have a thousand people at your school, 60 of them are narcissists, just uh, based on figures. So what you want to do is try to ignore them. You can't always, but you can do the best you can. Number six is deflection. How do you deflect a narcissist? You change the subject. The narcissist has to has to control every conversation. You've noticed that, right? I mean, at the very, very beginning, when they are love bombing you, then they're really interested in what you have to say. Well, they pretend to be. They're not really. But one of the way you know, one of the ways you know this is a narcissist is they that is one of the first masks that begins to slip. That love bombing mask begins to fall away. Then they move into this uh, trauma bonding, trauma drama. And um, what do you do? Well, what you do is, um, you know, talking about deflection is you just change the subject when they're talking. Don't want to talk about that. Don't want to go this place. You want to go there, go. Other people want to follow you, let them follow you. I'm going to this place. You go to that place. And they'll figure out very quickly, you are somebody who cannot be manipulated. And uh, they will regret, at least in my experience, regret they ever bothered with me. Number seven is show no weakness. Now, this is kind of the same as deflection in that we refuse to cooperate. Every time a narcissist get you to cooperate with him or her, that to them is a sign of weakness. Now, to me, it's just a sign of cooperation. I'm just trying to get along with people. And maybe the narcissist has a good idea. And a lot of times they do. It's kind of by accident, but maybe they do. And my natural inclination is to go along with them and cooperate. But uh, if it's a good idea, maybe I'll question it. Say, why do you want to do this? They don't like that. They are not to be questioned because, well, it's obvious they're always right, at least to them. Number eight is confidate, cultivate, cult, cultivate, excuse me, self-confidence. I got to say this one more time. When I make these mistakes, when I'm making videos, I very seldom go back and correct them because I want to have a conversation with you. And in real life conversation, you don't go back and you can't go back and edit out every time you make a mistake. So number eight is cultivate self-confidence. By that, I mean the way you walk, the way you talk. You need to exude self-confidence. Now keep this in mind. The reason the narcissist targeted you in the first place is because they sensed that you did not have the confidence, the self-confidence to stand up to them. So you were easy picking. So your confidence need, needs to be nonverbal. And it needs to be verbal. It's hard for me to do that because being a person who is uh, autistic, exuding confidence is just not natural. But, you know, after 70 years, I've learned to overcome that. Not completely, but enough to set off a narcissist and set him on his way. Number nine is outpace them. Or another way to say that is outlast them. One thing you'll notice about narcissists is they lack patience. They don't stick to things very long. Uh, yeah, there are some exceptions, but uh, narcissists tend not to make good mates. I'm talking about marriage. Now, I know some narcissists, I can think of one in particular, who has uh, who is a part of a deep religious, uh, what do you call it, community, that forbids divorce and this person even though it's a narcissist i'm not even going to say if it's a he or a she but uh, this person is going to be loyal to his or her mate because it's part of their religious uh, ideology but if it weren't for that they'd be gone they would have been gone a long time ago in fact their mate would have dumped them a long time ago but uh they don't tend to last friendships it's not going to last 
So, you know, just wait them out. You have patience. They do not have patience. That's why narcissists, so many of them, not all of them, but many of them move around a lot. They can't stay in the same place. Well, they, they don't pay the rent, but they move around a lot. They like to change things constantly because what they have is never good enough. They need something better in their minds. Number 10 is uh, do what you're doing right now. That is educate yourself on their nature and their tactics. I have spent uh, more hours than I could possibly remember studying narcissism and psychopathy. For some reason, those two things just amaze me. I also study autism. I love psychology. So educate yourself and then you know what to look for. You know, it's kind of like being able to detect counterfeit money. If you handle real money enough, you'll be able to detect counterfeit money. And if you are around real people long enough, you'll figure out which ones are fake. But you got to keep in mind that narcissists are really good actors. So uh, they're good counterfeiters. I mean, they're really good counterfeiters. So you got to be a pro. It's like the guy who um, evaluates art. There are some people out there who counterfeit masterpieces. And they, they rip off people for sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. But they get themselves in trouble when they try to, to uh, pass off a fake as a masterpiece to somebody who is uh, an art dealer who studies and knows intricately the master artist. And that's when they get caught. So be the, uh, you know, be the master of, um, of art. And your art is studying narcissist psychology. So number 11 is ask yourself this question. Do I need this person? Now, as I go back and think about all the narcissists that I've had in my life, I really didn't need them. I mean, there were some times when, during the love bombing stage, when, yeah, they were nice to have around. They may have helped me do something, not because they were sincere, but still they helped. So that was kind of nice. Uh, did I need them? Probably not. Uh, were they available during those times? Yeah, they were, but for a reason, you know, they were, uh, you know, again, they were love bombing, love bonding. And it worked until I figured them out. But uh, yeah, I really don't need them. They're gone. Do I need them now? No. If they come back, do I need them? No. I'm going to say, wow, what's going to change about this person? Nothing. Number 12 is dox them. By that, I mean get all the information, documentation you can about this person. Because... What I have found in my 70 plus years, if a person is a true, genuine narcissist, if he or she is abusing me, they have a history of abusing other people. They've got a history. Find out what their history is. I mean, who were they hanging out with before they were hanging out with you? Victims, people they victimized. And what I've discovered is a lot of these people have a, a, not just a history, but they have a... a they have an arrest record. Some of them, yeah. You know, go to your county courthouse. And the documentation, it's public record. You don't even have to pay for it to see it. I mean, you may have to pay to get copies of it, but, you know, it's, it's public record. It's available. Go down to the courthouse. You could probably do this online nowadays, but go down to the courthouse. Say you want to see the public records of so-and-so. How do I do that? Chances are. They have a public access computer. And again, you could probably, I know in our state, you can do this on the internet. Don't even have to go to the courthouse. So number 12 is dox them. That is not being mean. That is uh, informing yourself of what you're dealing with. So you know how to deal with this person in the future. Number 13 is, this is number one, but I saved it till last. And I say this frequently, that is be honest. The thing that distinguishes you and the narcissist as being different is you are honest and the narcissist, they can't be. I mean, their whole life is deception, where your whole life, I hope, is honesty. Okay, maybe you're dishonest sometimes, maybe you're a little bit narcissistic, I hope not. But, uh, you know, honest people compared to uh, narcissists, there's, well, there's no real comparison. Sadly, when they go into the smear campaign, there are a lot of people, gullible like I was, probably like you were, 
who don't see it at the very beginning. But eventually, it's going to show up. That's why you dox them, by the way. All right, let's tile this together. Here's what you do. My opinion, this is just kind of an overall assessment of what we talked about, and that is just allow these people, these narcissists, to self-destruct. They will, eventually. I've never known one who didn't uh, because of their lifestyle, because of the way they live. You know, as I say many times, um, I would not do to a narcissist what they do to themselves. I would be overwhelmed with guilt and shame. I have too much empathy. I'm not going to hurt these people the way they hurt themselves. Um, I don't have to get back at them because they're doing it on their own. There is a red dot, lower right-hand corner. Click on that to subscribe to our YouTube channel, be part of our family. Lower left-hand corner, there is a rectangle. Click on that to access our library. There are dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds by now, of videos we've made in the past, fresh as they were made today, and we'll see you all next time.